building and a prettier RS125 bottom end. Episode 8. Before we get started in rebuilding the engine, I just want to check my crank, see if it's still okay. What you are seeing here is a crankshaft runout check. The dial indicator is reading how much the crank wobbles at the journals as I rotate it. Rotax will let you get away with about 0.03mm. For most builders, that's weighing spec. For an engine that's going to lift near to 11,000 RPM, I want this under 0.01mm. Less wobble means happier bearings, smoother running and far less chance of that harsh vibration that people know about. So by looking at the gauge carefully and rotating the crank within the jig you can see the needle moving up and down. Once you've found the high spot you remove the crank out of the jig and hit it with a copper hammer. You have to use a copper hammer because anything more than a copper hammer will give marks onto the actual crank itself. This is the oven I use to heat the bearings. It's set to 80 degrees for 40 minutes so they can heat soak. The crank is in the freezer at minus 27 so this can actually contract. I'm using some brand new two stroke oil on the bearing to help it slide down the actual shaft of the crank. After this is done it goes back in the freezer to refreeze. Now on to bearing installation using temperature instead of brute force. The aluminium cases are warmed up so they expand slightly and the bearings have been chilling in the freezer overnight at minus 27. The hot aluminium grows, the steel shrinks. The interference fit does the work for you. Done right, the bearings will just drop home without pressing or hammering and you avoid damaging the bearing. On my build, I have upgraded the actual crank seals to a Viton style one. This means they're just more chemically resistant. I'm installing the counterbalance weight here just slides into place there's no resistance whatsoever after that I'm gently heating the cases back up then repeating all the hunt process again installing every single pairing using the temperature differential This is the part that looks like a puzzle dumped all over the bench, the gearbox. We've got the input shaft, output shaft, selected drums and forks all working together as one unit. I like to use a little bit of assembly oil on the dogs and contact surfaces before installation. It gives a bit of protection before it has its first revolutions. Now this is where things get really fiddly. Installing the RS125 gearbox isn't just dropping a few gears in and hoping for the best. Every shaft has to align perfectly while you're juggling three or four different gears at once. The selector forks need to slide into the grooves while you keep tension of the shaft drum. Get one gear slightly out of position and you have to start again. Really irritating. This is generally one of the trickiest parts of the entire build. You need three or four different hands patience of a saint but once it all clicks into place and you can shift through every single gear without any issues that's the moment you know when you've done it right i bet you're thinking why is there a bit of bronze sticking inside that there that's just to protect the seal why i heat the gaze back up it's time to run back off to the freezer to go and get the crank and install it back into its new home the Rotex 122 uses a constant mesh gearbox. This means all gears are always engaged at one time. What actually selects your ratio is a dog sliding in between locking different gears into the shaft as the drum rotates. 
Once it's all in, I rotate the drum by hand and watch the forks and gears move. I'm looking for smooth, positive engagement with no binding or stiffness. I'm going to be quiet for a little while so you can hear the engagement for you. Before closing the cases, I like to have a dress rehearsal to make sure everything's in correctly. Here I am installing the paper gasket. Delete the gasket and things will go wrong. As the engine will heat up, you'll probably have a bind. That tiny amount of side to side movement on the crate is essential. It's easy to think of this as just an oil seal, but engines like the Rotex 122, gasket thickness also affects the crank end float. I'm using the old fasteners here. I'm not happy with them. They are going to get replaced. Some of the heads are damaged. Nothing's getting new bolts on the way, so I'm not locking it down yet. In the next video, I will install the new fresh hardware talk everything to spec in a pattern and then do a final crank and gearbox check. Next episode will include new bolts, talking up the engine, installing the clutch. If this has helped you see the process a bit clearer, please consider subscribing so you don't miss a talk down and shakedown.